Hello and welcome back to the lab. Uh, it's quarantine over here so the team has not been able to assemble for a long time. However, that has not been a bad time for collecting and I have also had great support from viewers and patrons which I cannot thank enough. So uh, let's take a quick look at, at all the great July uh, acquisitions and then we'll, we'll go into more detail into each of these. Um, on the left, those units are for uh, TTY. Um, they are from their a gift from patron uh, John Lawson. You might remember a camera shy John and his tube shack from when we did the radioactive tube episode. Thank you, John. Uh, we have a field line unit for teletype, wire teletype, and two uh, decoder units uh, for radio teletype. We'll go into more detail over those. A uh, gift from uh, Bob Rosenblum, the original engineering uh, package for the HP 2645, the entire documentation. Over here, those are uh, eBay acquisitions, some not that great, some really great. So on the not that great, this is an HP uh, 4957A protocol analyzer, which was uh, sold as 100% tested and uh, working and it's neither of that. Uh, over here a military joystick that I intend to use for uh, moon landing simulations as the land joystick. Uh, here is something very interesting is uh, from a Russian spy radio it's all the accessories and uh, we'll look at this in to more details. Uh, finally over here, this is from uh, auctions, those are two uh, high power supplies that we'll need for the uh, powering up the aerospace stuff that's coming up. A gift from Ken Partridge, a viewer that works at WTI, thank you Ken. Uh, this is a serial switch, connects uh, 24 ports, anything serial to any other thing serial, in case I need to connect a HP terminal to a, a TTY or who knows. And then over here, finally, from uh, Sherry McGrath, thanks Sherry, that's from her father, and those are you know, old HP catalogs, and this is a 1969, it's absolutely fascinating, we'll take a look uh, later on. But the major acquisition of this month doesn't quite fit on the bench. It's this uh, new old IBM 2501, and that's a punch card reader, the whole 400 pounds of it, I think. And they still have the punch cards and the weight to it. And this I uh, bought from uh, Bob Rosenblum. You might remember Uber collector Bob Rosenblum and his vast and impressive collection of vintage computers in the woods. We had a three-way exchange between me, him and John Lawson, where we all came with three large vehicles full of stuff and departed with the same vehicle full of different stuff. We somehow managed to stuff the 2501 in my SUV, but just barely. And this is to complete my collection of the 360-370 system. I have the 1200 line per minute printer over there. I have the tape drives, the tape controller unit, uh, downstairs I have the panel, here are two more tape drive units, they are stacked at the back right now. So I am pretty close to having a, a full 360 system here that I can put back together. And this is definitely a multi-year effort that we are looking at right here. So starting over here, this is a line unit BE77-C and it's actually the military field equivalent of my blue boxes. This is for use with my 1930s and 1940s military teletypes. To connect them properly, you need various line boxes to create the high voltage current loop, which I had previously made by converting modern electrical connection blue boxes. It's a box that allows you to uh, adjust the line current to 60 milliamp and monitor it. And how, how neat is that? You have the whole schematics engraved in a plate on the side. And this one has all kind of stuff inside. And there is a repeater relay, if I can take it out. 
So this is one functionality that I don't have in my blue boxes. So this is a relay, of course, there to allow you to do uh, better long distance communications. And there's an adjustment for the sensitivity of the relay. So you can uh, make it such that it corrects distortions due to distance. So really equivalent of my blue box, but better. Over here, those are Hoffman radio military equipment. Um, they are CV89 uh, RTTY uh, converters. Uh, they are frequency shift keying uh, decoders. And uh, patrons know that I already had uh, purchased one on eBay, but I got two more. Also from John Lawson via Henry. Uh, one of his uh, friends in, in Nevada, I don't know his last name, but uh, Henry used to have the uh, Western Radio Museum in Virginia City in Nevada and has an incredible collection of uh, old radios. Let, let's take a look inside because this is just beautiful equipment. So this is beautiful military stuff. It's all modular. And in the middle, there's a little CRT that helps you figure out if your uh, demodulation is, is centered correctly. I got an extra one. It's a tube like this, electrostatic tube. And all the beautiful caps we'll have to look at, make sure they're good or replace them. Now that's a fantastic unit. So hopefully we can hook that up to the teletype and do some radio teletype transmission with it. The next one from um, Bob Rosenblum, it's the TIP, Technical Information Package. So it's basically the complete engineering documentation for the 2645 terminals with all the details. I made a video series about the amazing HP 2645 terminal, including one where I switched the character set to a Star Wars one. But I was still missing some very important information every car that has ever been made for it. A lot of those have been scanned, but I have the absolute complete reference. Look at those schematics. They don't do it like this anymore, do they? I have eight volumes of this thing. And one of them is the original source code for the ROMs, basically the OS for the thing. And basically that gives you the call back to any of the uh, ROM routines, uh, which enable you to, to use the, this terminal as an application specific computer, really, uh, if you can program in uh, 808 or assembly. And uh, you could make new games, for example. So next is the ever so cute HP 4957 with a little patch panel for the RS-232 over here. It has this ever so cute little keyboard and screen. It is supposed to have the internal terminal in ROM. Load application. It's right here, VT100. So that's the big thing that this one has over the 50, uh, 1 and 52 execute and the problem is is that it's supposed to give you uh, whatever 25 by 80 so it changes to the small letters and there's something wrong in the character generation it makes all these funny characters when you type a character it affects the character that's just before inside it's full this one is full of cplds and uh, fpga so there's just no way uh, to repair this one i'll need a new motherboard for it uh, but the screen is good so i'll, I'll keep it and um, look at it's very cute you get all your you know an overview of all your signals uh, but unfortunately i'll need a new motherboard for this one uh, so if you guys have one with a bad screen the good motherboard i want to hear about it Next one, a much better eBay buy. Uh, I had been looking for a uh, really beefy joystick and that's of course to do a lunar landing with uh, an ersatz of the LEM uh, translation or rotation controller. 
uh, believe it or not, you can get the rotation controllers on auction, but you can imagine those are for the original LEM hardware and it costs a fortune. Uh, but this one does the trick uh, and it was sold as uh, from uh, some Eastern Bloc uh, tank joystick, but it's, I don't think it's Eastern Bloc, exactly uh, over here it's in French, AM is Marche I uh, on and off. Uh, there is no test derive. That's that's definitely some some kind of uh, French equipment. Uh, and uh, the back, you can see it's Italian pots. Uh, at first, it didn't work, uh, but it was easy to figure out why this got bent in transport and it was missing the springs. So once I convert it, that should be a superb joystick. And look, it has the the fluid damping. It's just awesome. And then you can you can fire your rocket by just pushing it. So pretty good buy. Next, from the same eBay vendor of Eastern European stuff, uh, in this beautiful shoe box, came at least something really surprisingly good. Um, these are accessories for a Russian spy radio that was used during the Cold War, and it has a complete set of accessories. The headphones with their plugs, the antenna, with the weight, so you were supposed to throw the weight over a tree or something to deploy your antenna quickly. Uh, there are some, some cables to power it up. Uh, this is a, a little shield so you can view the frequency. I'll show you the radio in a second. Uh, so in that, you, know, you, you can view it only you and so you're still in the dark, you won't be discovered. And probably the most amazing part of it is this little punch and this little cutter. So this was made to cut 35 millimeter, millimeter films, which you could um, buy at the store without being detected. Cut it in two and then you use the punch and you can punch numbers to send coded messages. And you can see it here, here's your punch tape and it goes into the radio and you can transmit your whole message coded in a very short amount of time and not be detected. And so I have the whole accessories, all I need is the radio. But the reason I bought that is that there was an upcoming auction on our auction for the radio in question, which is pretty rare. And I actually got it. So this has not arrived yet. I'll get it pretty soon. So now I should have a complete set. We'll see if it's uh, complete internally. But here you see the reader where the coded message is. So you can only, for uh, sending, you can only send code. So it has only the keypad. It has a Morse code, Pavel. And uh, for reception, you can tune to uh, HF. So the idea is to use that thing, which has no tubes in it. Uh, with the and uh, with the uh, TTY decoder and make uh, radio teletype spy transmissions. Over here, those are lucky auction buys, um, and these are power supplies I was looking for for the aerospace stuff that we are going to try to power up. Uh, so this is 2.4 kilowatts. This is probably more than I need. Uh, but we will need it uh, to power, for example, uh, the shuttle uh, computer. It, it's, it's a huge beast. And down here is something I've been looking for a long time to uh, power uh, three-phase uh, gyros, including my uh, Apollo gyro. And it's uh, thanks to Nick, a viewer, that was uh, appalled when he saw what I use uh, for my uh, gyro spin-up and uh, pointed me to this uh, Pacific, uh, Pacific Power Source uh, brand and they make excellent uh, you know, one phase to three phase converters, 400 hertz, 3200 hertz, which I need for the gyro, uh, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, anything you want on three phase and you can program any phase you want. You want. Now, last but not least, the uh, HP catalogs, those are, were famous in the time, they are still famous. I have the 1980, and for fun I marked all the instruments I have. It turns out I have 61 instruments from that catalog. 
But even more important to me was the 1969 catalog. Thank you, Sherry, for giving us this precious catalog from your father. There's nothing better than this. It gives you all the details, the price. The, it's, 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 a, it's an engineering book in itself. It's just fantastic stuff. This one is in superb shape. It's, it's absolutely perfect. And to my surprise, I have no less than 15 instruments from that catalog. So I have the HP 2116 over here. HP's first computer. I have the uh, HP 428B the milliammeter. That's the one I use on the NAD amplifier to check the current in the supply without disrupting anything. That's how I know that there is no other faults. Uh, I just got uh, from Bob Rosenblum a 2402 digital voltmeter. So digital voltmeter uh, in 1969 with the Nixie tubes. What else do I have? Oh, I have those two tires. Those, those are hilarious. The uh, uh, frequency meter tires are super precise, but they are super hard to operate. It hardly creates a blip. I should make a video on these. What else? Little amplifier. Uh, I had used that for core memory. It's one of their you know, new solid state. It has transistors in it. The uh, 180D oscilloscope. This is just a fantastic instrument. Just zero noise on that thing. The earliest digital power supply, the 6130B, which you can uh, program from a computer, and it's also bidirectional. You can uh, have it from I guess minus 60 volt to plus 60 volt 6224B the little power supply that's a gift from a viewer I use it all the time when I want uh, some 50 volts um, this is the power supply amplifier which I use in uh, very recently to uh, with with the core memory experiment to find out when the cores were flipping do I oh yes I have I have that counter but it's broken Nixie counter and I have the 500 megahertz plug-in uh, which is one of these which is completely broken the, the thing doesn't move a bit this is going to be a very challenging restoration uh, this is the uh, Nixie uh, tube I mean the, and, uh, 1969 everything is Nixie um, a lower frequency uh, counter I think mine goes to 500 kilohertz it, uh, it's repaired it works uh, the cesium clock from uh, that's not mine that's Marcel's and and that's it so plenty of 1969 goodness all right thank you uh, for, to all the viewers and the patrons that uh, helped acquire all these wonderful things and uh, hopefully you'll still that you'll see them all restored and working in future videos bye